Um, hi everyone, welcome to the stream. Uh, we're we're joined here by Skunk Ape Games and Dave Grossman. Hi everyone. Hey. Hello. 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 Hi. Nice to be here. Um, let's just go ahead and transition over to actually seeing y'all's faces. There y'all are. Hi. Oh, and Jake's cat. <laughs> cat <button there. laughs> right. Love it. Now I'm watching me down here and watching me up there. Yes, oh, making sure that everything... Well, everything looks good on my end, so... Um, sorry that took me forever to set up, but... Um, no, there we go. It's good to have y'all. Now let me... Um, let me... Good oh, to be had. Let me pull up the Twitch chat real quick. Is that... I bet there's been 20,000 messages. Yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Already comments about Jake's cat. That's yeah, good. cat's here. His name's Johnny. He's very nice. Aw. Named after me, too? Yeah, named after John Scro. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> very good. It's a trend. So, uh, the only thing. John Scro. Can someone let me know in the comments if the music in the background is too loud? Um, I can't hear it. Um, but yes, welcome guys to the JDRF charity live stream of Sam and Max Save the World Remastered. Of course, the original game was made by Telltale Games, and the new remaster has been made by Skunk Ape Games. Which, by the way, I adore that title of y'all's company. <laughs> um, after General Skunkape, um, I'm a huge fan of uh, Devil's Playhouse, so it. It definitely had a special place in my heart. <laughs> I hope Skukampe would be proud. Yeah, I don't know how proud he'd be of being called Skunk Ape, but, you know, <laughs> at least at least his name gets to somewhat live on. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so today we are here uh, raising money for uh, to help fight type 1 diabetes with JDR JDRF, which is the juvenile diabetes research foundation um and dan do you mind sharing your connection with jdrf uh emily wanted me to make sure that you shared a few words yeah not at all um for, i'm super happy that um jdrf was able to host this for us this this kind of celebration of the launch of the game and um just super um Glad that Jake and John and Randy and Dave were were willing to spend their time to to help um, as well for the to help to agree to do the charity for the charity as well for JDRF. Um, it's an important thing to me. My son has had type one diabetes since he was five years old. He's twelve now, and um, it's just been something that I've been passionate about. I've um, as someone who has had been a caretaker, I kind of understand how difficult the disease is, and um, we've worked with JDRF over the last couple of years to get JDRF a community built inside of the gaming community to help people with diabetes come together and share their stories and support each other. And, and it's gotten a lot of traction. Uh, and through that process, we've met Caleb, who's done a lot of streams for us and is really uh, a great uh, streamer to, to do uh, adventure games and to do our content. So it's been a great, a great uh, thing to have happened. And, uh, really happy that you've you've agreed to do the stream for us tonight caleb and um we're looking at, at jdrf just what, what what our mission is is to try to uh, find a cure for di type 1 diabetes so that people living with the disease don't have to um have the constant burden uh, of it you know it's kind of a silent disease because a lot of people with with type 1 diabetes you know are very strong and and want to really um do well and not make it the focus of their life so that they don't reach out a lot. Um, but people that, that know people with diabetes realize how, what a struggle it is and how hard it is. So, um, so yeah, if you, if you get, if you can give, that's great to help the cause. Uh, we, I know times are tough for everybody and, um, I'm just really excited to play the game and, and let everybody see, uh, Sam and Max and have a chance to talk to the wonderful creators that, that made this, um, that made this happen. Definitely. Thank you so much. Um, so we are, like he said, we are raising money to fight type 1 diabetes. Uh, my story, the reason why I've been working with JDRF so close, um, 
a lot of my followers who are in the chat know this story. Uh, but I had a best friend. His name was Blake. And we grew up together when, when I was in first grade and he was in kindergarten. And we grew up for about 18 years being best friends. And unfortunately, back in um, 2017, um, his insulin pump um, malfunctioned and it, it stopped working and he ended up falling into a coma. Um, and we were with him for about a week, but unfortunately it was pretty far gone by the time anyone found him in the hospital. Um, and unfortunately he passed away. Um, but JDRF was always such an important outlet for him. You know, he took part in all the walks and the camps and everything else. And so I knew that for his sake that I needed to like continue to give to JDRF at um, and then luckily, uh, Dan and the JDRF team started the Game to Give initiative of JDRF a few years ago, um, or last year or the year before? Um, two, two years ago. Two years yeah. ago. Wow. Um, and so I was like, shoot, I'm much better at playing video games than I am at doing a walkathon. So <laughs> I'll, I'll start raising money for JDRF this way. Um, and it's been a great, um... It, it's it's been a, a great thing to be a part of for sure um, yeah and, and caleb you know you, you represent kind of two things to me you've always represented two things one of like the greatest fear of being someone who has a uh, a loved one with diabetes and the greatest dream of the of the beauty of a true friend and a supporter so um so again thank you and and you know i admire you so oh, thanks thank for doing you it. Oh. Um, well, um, you guys, uh, thank y'all so much for being here, obviously, again. Um, if anyone in the comments has questions for um, uh, Gabe Games and Dan, you know, uh, or uh, and Dave, let us know. Um, like, we're, they're here to answer your questions. We're all here for Andy's dog. That sounds about right. <laughs> not gonna lie i'm a cat and a dog lover so i've been really enjoying seeing animals in the stream it's all I, animal stream <laughs> i actually have someone watching my dogs right now so i don't have to worry about them otherwise i'd be pulling my poodles up to show them off <laughs> i always felt bad because when when telltale was tiny tiny it was a dog friendly company and i was the person who showed up with a dog allergy oh and no randy had a dog with him at that point and he had to he had to start leaving him at home well that um that's why i have i have poodles because i have a really bad dog allergy they're uh hypoallergenic so um they've been real good me, personally yeah i got the same I got two poodly white things um, so Blue asks, did Sam and Max have any inspiration when being created? Now, um, Sam and Max were characters created by Steve Purcell, um, in the form of comics. And then their fir the first video game for Sam and Max was actually created by LucasArts Games. Uh, Sam and Max hit the road. But as far as making this game, you know, save the world, y'all's first, like, outing into that, um... Did y'all work closely with Steve Purcell? Like, was there inspiration there in that regard? Well, yeah, we um, did. Yeah. And it, it, I mean, Dan Dan was working on the previous um, incarnation of, of Sam and Max at LucasArts. They were, they were working on a, a, a new game there. And, I mean, tell that story. Well, um, we, we, at LucasArts, we were charged with figuring out there was a big movement to make um, to make games episodic um, because they felt like the adventure game franchises needed a new way to be presented. Um, and Sam and Max was determined to be the right license to do it with. So myself and Mike Stemley um, and um, and Kevin Bruner and a bunch of other people worked. And John was on that team. Randy, were you on that team at, oh, yeah. at Lucas? Yep. Um, so we started we started doing that there and um, worked closely with Steve on that. Um, but when t when LucasArts decided that it wasn't worth pursuing that anymore, because downloadable games wasn't something that was going to happen, 
um we left and 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 started up telltale and then started working with steve on the on the story for um for what became culture shock which i think was probably the biggest the biggest involvement he had was probably season one and after that he kind of left let us be but I, I i distinctly remember a night in a mexican restaurant with dave and uh and steve and and um brendan and we were definitely throwing back throwing back stories and eating burritos and, and nachos and uh the thing i remember sticking from that most was the fourth episode was the Lincoln, the evil Lincoln statue was like the big thing that came out of that meeting. But he was involved a lot from that point forward um, on the first we season. Continued to have those meetings on the uh, for the later seasons. We just didn't invite you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. That's because you didn't like my, any of my ideas. That's right. <laughs> that that whole Abe Lincoln thing, terrible. <laughs> Well, that was a team. That was a team thing, you know, and that's like one of those MMAX things where you're talking about the inspiration for it. Steve and his brother started it as a comic way back in, I guess it would have been the 70s. And it, it, as a license, he's really been great at bringing interesting people in to, and, and supporting really good ideas. And everybody kind of brings an extra level of Sam and Maxiness to to the franchise. And, the, and it just kind of adds to it. It's, it's not hard to ask someone to do something weirder. <laughs> uh i i have a question um do y'all mind telling us if you don't want to go into detail but um y'all mind telling us a little bit of the story of the max voice actor season one episode one um being different oh, yeah. from the rest of the episodes yeah it was a guy named andrew chaikin he was a voice actor, uh, like a Bay Area voice actor, who was in the two episodes that Telltale made based on the Bone comic books, and he was cast as Max. And then I think he just had a medical issue, and he couldn't make it for, I think, episodes two and three, if I remember correctly. We might have recorded back-to-back, -back, and it was like, we're just going to lose that guy for a huge chunk of the season. And we had to decide to recast him, and then we recast him, and then it, it, we just kept the new guy. Sorry, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, is that accurate, Dave? Does that sound about right? That's that's exactly right. Uh, that's although exactly. Andrew Chagan did come back to the Seven Max series to play the narrator who narrates every episode of season three. So oh, he, that's awesome! I love that guy. He, he, he reappeared, and his performance in that is awesome. But oh. yeah, that, that was a terrifying game development moment too, because yep. I mean, one of the things about these games is we've made them very, very fast, and we didn't get too many um cracks at the at the voice acting in fact we we recorded multiple episodes at the same time and it was you know coming coming down to the wire we you know we had everything sort of ready to go for those episodes and then we got the word that he can't make it i was like oh no what do we do you know do we recast him do we wait do we you know but we couldn't we couldn't stop the the rolling train at at, at some level so we did have to have to change change horses in midstream again yeah, and then I think at that point it didn't make sense to change back again after you've changed once. Yeah, right. Well, I it's it did create an quote, additional right? awkward moment on top of the first awkward moment, though, for sure. And of course, their their voices were so similar, you know, because they were just trying to capture that character. But um, yeah, I just played through season one, episode one, and I was like, wait, this is a different guy. Like, I, I... it's the same guy. Oh no, uh, yeah. <laughs> The um, voice never changed. Someone asked, even in the Canadian cartoon show, it's the same guy. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, someone did ask, "Who is William Caston?" And I'm actually um, genuinely like curious as well because there's like no information on the internet about William Caston. Are we allowed to talk about that? It's I don't hard. think we're allowed to talk about it. I mean, I think the... that is the name of the actor credited right. to play Max in Sam and Max. Gotcha. Well, yeah, because I, I, I was looking up, um, I was making a little video that uh, is where I, but I was doing a lot of research and I was fine to look up anything into him and it's just like William Caston, you know, <laughs> like, no, so it's like, cool, oh, that works. Yeah, it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, he does a great work, uh, for sure. I love, Max is one of my favorite characters, so, um, just crazy that oh you know, Andrew just fortunately <laughs> being sick it just kind of changed his whole career path you know in that sense 
he, he was in a lot of other. I think Andrew's been pretty he was in good. Yeah, played everything in our early games. Uh, yeah, we had, we really had a staple of actors that were in a lot of that were our go tos, and uh, Andrew was one of them. And he was a great beatboxer as well. Yep. <laughs> anyone remembers what that was? Yeah, I don't think that ever ended up in a game though, uh, other than outtakes. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, if if you've already asked questions and we're missing them, just go ahead and re-ask them. Um, but yeah, I um, I'm very excited. We'll um, about 15 minutes. We'll start playing the game, uh, and of course, y'all can keep asking questions. And uh, you all, you know, definitely make sure I slow down so y'all can point out any of the cool new changes. Um, very excited for like little things like the, uh, Jimmy Two Teeth scene, like looks so good. Um, I'm not gonna spoil it, but, uh, just, I did a great job. <laughs> yeah. It, it I'm could... excited to see it too. I'll, I will spill this for the audience that I've been saving myself for this moment. Oh, good. Oh, good. We, can watch, we can watch Dave hate all of our changes in real time <laughs> as they come up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why'd y'all do that? <laughs> It's like old times. It's <laughs> reality TV. Jared, uh, how long this took to to make? Um, a long time. <laughs> uh, I've been working on it full time since August of last year. I think it. John was like part time at first, and then full time. Yeah. Work after that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was such a small Jake, team, though. <laughs> Jake, we had to force to work on the weekends. Yeah, I was weekends. You two were mostly full time for over a year, and then we had uh, Brett Rogstad of late era Telltale Games doing lighting, and Eric Parsons, who was a cinematic artist and director, came in and helped clean up a lot of that stuff. Uh, we had Emma, our art intern, and then um, a lot of random bits and bobs of people helping out elsewhere as well. And then obviously Jared. Uh, Jared Emerson Johnson came back and wrote some new music as well, which is awesome. Yeah, that was a really fun. That was a really fun time right around April or or May, I think, of this year. You know, twenty twenty really messes with everyone's time. Yeah. But Jared did the recording for the new music right kind of early, early days like May or something, and it was really fun to. to he got a bunch of live musicians in a room and it pump out the tracks and. Uh, it really reinvigorated everybody. And let's be clear, the live musicians were in the room one at a time, and they were wearing masks. Uh, <laughs> right, unless they were right. playing a, a wind instrument. <laughs> oh, well. But yes. <laughs> but yes, but they were still alive and, and being live recorded. <laughs> yes, they were. But it was, I have all the video from that session, and it's, an, it's, it's, like, it's extremely an artifact of this time. Oh, my God. Yeah, um, Nick Saint asked um do y'all have any specific favorite improvements to this work uh that ever the nighttime driving yeah and i'm on the street when you're when you're yeah. driving after um the soda poppers uh yeah. it that it it slowly transitions from day to night and i'm it was such a simple i mean you know not to say it's simple to do but like to me it like blew my mind I was just like, oh, wow, like that's just really visibly pleasing. So uh, that was probably yeah. my favorite I've seen so far. <laughs> the, uh, the whole game is lit in real time entirely at this point, which, you know, gives you all the nice real time shadows and stuff. And in the original release of Culture Shock, when you get to Brady Culture's Asylum for Child Stars or for former Child Stars, excuse me, it's nighttime. Uh, because I, I can't really speak to why other than it's probably seemed cool. Um, but because all the lighting was baked, it was like pre-computed in the old version of the game. It, it meant that when you went back to the street, it was daytime again. And I know that there was sort of a shim of a joke put over that by way of there was a warning sign in the alley that just said alley of perpetual darkness. So I apologize for removing that joke uh, in, in favor of making it actually be nighttime once you get there. So sorry, that's we start counting jokes removed. That's one. Um, but but so we added we added back in that reference to uh, hit the road. We changed that sign. Oh, that's true. That's I forgot. That that's true. There's the the vehicles. All vehicles will be towed or whatever it is. Uh, yep. Uh, but it it 
seemed like a really cool way to show off the updated lighting to have the first episode actually switch to nighttime once Max gets kidnapped. So then Sam's like walking the streets alone in the back half of the game uh, at night. Pretty good. Um, my favorite change is probably the opening credits. Um, we kept it most of the same. The opening credits was the first piece of art that I think I ever put in a video game ever. And I'm still pretty proud of it, but um, I wanted to make it a little spicier for the remaster. So we added uh, an opener and a closer where you see the green Hypno Vortex stuff and uh, Sam and Max leap into frame. And it's animation that I stole from the opening of Sam and Max Season 3 uh, when they jump in front of the badge in that opening credits. And then it closes with some more animation that we stole from the 2006 Game Tap trailer for the game. Uh, and we used that as a space to just put the credits for the remaster in. Um, and Jared wrote a whole new track for that that is no longer a sound alike. Uh, a legally distinct sound alike of the Sam and Max at the Road theme, which I think is uh, awesome. It's like one of my favorite pieces of Sam and Max music that we snuck in 13 years later or whatever. So, uh, Dave, we'll see if you like it or hate it. Dave's going to be the thumbs up, thumbs down on all changes. I like but... everything Jared does, so I'm sure it's good. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I um, actually got to talk to Jared for the first time recently um, a Walking Dead stream, and... Um, Unfortunately, I kind of talked his ear off about Sam and Max because that's like, <laughs> I, that's my favorite series. Um, like I've I've grown up loving Sam and Max, so for <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's cool, Walking Dead, that's fine. But but Sam and Max though, like <laughs> all these jazzy tunes. Um, so it's really neat that there's new songs made by him. Yeah, yeah. Music wise, I think Sam and Max was really the best place to stretch to stretch out and really do interesting. Music. I mean, I think there's a lot of good dramatic soundtrack music throughout the history history that Jared's done, but the Sam and Max stuff is kind of like the most, I don't know, expressive. I guess just just my, just my opinion of it, but you might say the same thing. Um, I I do want to. Uh, I saw a question earlier. Get who asked it, but um, someone was asking how much of the original assets were there. Um, that are still in the game or how much did y'all have to like replace I, I believe they're like totally new models for we had all the original source but we've we pretty much updated everything in some way we touched every texture touched every vertice of the character models environment models every asset was updated in some way to, <clears throat> to make it better <clears throat> A lot of it's like smoothing it out or slightly pushing the shapes around or or in the case of some textures, the artists actually made them at two times or four times the size that we shipped that we were able to go back and find the original source files for those and then convert those back into the game. So a lot of like posters or the uh, the pinstriping on the side of the DeSoto or whatever, the artist actually made that at super high res at the time. And then we uh, crunched it down to be tiny to fit onto 2006 downloadable game portals. But for the character models and environment models, John, you and Emma ended up going back in and actually doing like new sculpting work and actual like uprezzing and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we pretty much touched everything. One of the one of the one of the moments in the project that was kind of a thing that says the way the project went is uh, John kept experimenting with lines to try to get the characters to look more to just get more lines on the character to get more, more hand drawn because he knew we had moved to that technology. And we were struggling with it. It wasn't exactly perfect. And and you know, I kept I kept saying, well, it's that it's just too hard. It's too much. It's we'll never get there. And John was like, no, no, I can do it. I can do it. And then I said, no, no, we can. We'll never get there. And then John went in and figured it out and ended up doing putting the line tech in throughout the game that really makes the thing uh, makes the thing pop. And uh, I don't know if that involved a lot of reworking the assets, but um, that was certainly something that that uh, we made ha that. John made happen with Emma and Randy and everyone else and Jake to to it get to the right place. Required a lot of begging of time from Tim, our contract graphics programmer. Yes. But, uh, yeah, I think it's the coolest version of that sort of telltale modern telltale outlining stuff that that I that I've seen. I say I say that not having worked on any of the ones that had the other outlines that also look really nice, but it's way better. Yeah, it, so, it ended up working very well compared to other outline techniques yeah. I've seen out there. It, yeah, it really it's, helped it's, pull out the right feel to get the looked like there was um, intent to where the outlines are being drawn rather than just doing hard outlines completely around the characters. 
Yeah, they're cool. They're really subtle and they're sort of two-tone, which gives them this sort of painterly look sometimes where like if they're near light or dark shapes, we can choose which color the lines trend towards so that the outlines sort of go from warm to cool and stuff. It's neat. It's neat stuff that maybe people will notice now that we talked about it on this Twitch stream. <laughs> well, since you mentioned Tim, we should mention the Horizon tech in driving to that allows us to roll the road sort of like Animal Crossing. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of work, and um, but very cool. Yeah, that was an example, I think, of slightly torturing the Telltale tool beyond what it wanted to do, where Tim, our graphics programmer, put a sort of animal style, like curved horizon shader into the driving. So the city always looks like it's sort of rolling up over the horizon, which looked awesome until we realized that all the things that you shoot weren't being bent because that was only the graphics and none of the actual gameplay code. So like the horizon was tipped and then off into the distance were just like newspaper racks uh, or like the, the the selection boxes for newspaper racks just floating up into the sky uh, on the old horizon line. And then Randy had to write code that like squished all of them down into the ground so that it lined up with the graphics. Uh, but it looks it looks awesome now. It looks very nice. Um, that was one of those scenes that I think no one ever really on the team was convinced looked the way that we wanted it to look because we were trying to do an infinite disappearing horizon with like four city blocks just scrolling past the camera all the time and it's pretty sweet looking now i wanted to say real quick that i don't know if you all saw that harrison pink is in the chat um, yes, no. harrison. Oh, okay. hey, harrison. he's been saying hello also he said a true telltale solve for a complex problem <laughs> yep. uh, fact no lies detected <laughs> But, um, yeah, okay, well, I think, um, if it's alright with y'all, we'll start playing the game. Um, episode, Season 1, Episode 1, Remastered, uh, Culture Shock. And, um, y'all will still be able to hear all of y'all. Um, we won't see y'all, so feel free to get comfy. Um, and is there anything y'all want to add before we get started? Um, anything? No. Are you going to show the menu? I'll <laughs> I show, say as the person who made the menu. I'll show you the, I'll show the menu. I selfishly <laughs> ask if the menu will be in the screen. Is the UI going to be in the screen? Yeah, Sorry, I think I, I have that. to show the menu because it, now that I think about it, I haven't reset my save data for episode one. So I'll have oh, to, yeah, you got to hit that restart button. I'll have to hit that David restart button. <laughs> but yes, no, you, you, will, you will see everything. Um, and hopefully I've got the volume set. Um you know, compared to y'all, so everyone can still hear, but not overwhelming. Um, yeah. It's goofy, but the menu was actually a big change because the original game was done, done before Telltale actually, uh, before Telltale released things as a season. So every episode was actually a separate EXE file with a separate Windows installer that you had. To, it was like before Steam really did third-party stuff. It was before we did DLC or anything like that. So it was like... You get six exe files with six installers and that's it so we had we, we didn't actually have a launcher for the whole season until we did this one yeah i yeah i mean i've just been i've been going back and forth between playing the the steam copies of the game uh of the you know original and then going back to the remaster so like booting up each individual game you know it just kind of it just starts <laughs> it's like okay yeah Click to the episode you want, so here it is. Um, all right, well, um, we'll go ahead and transition over quick. Cool. All right, and once again, guys, don't forget this is a JDRF charity live stream. All donations do go to help fight type 1 diabetes, you can see here. Um, I had recently set up a goal of $500, um, and we've had $230 raised of that goal um, from no. the previous stream and this stream. So um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, actually, I think I can pull up if any. Um, but yes, this is Sam and Max Save the World, and it is... Beautiful. I love the Midtown Cowboys and the Purcell soda off to the side. <laughs> I um 
I had no idea what Midtown Cowboys were because I had never played season one previously. <laughs> um, I was like, I wonder what that's a reference to. And immediately in episode two, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> part, part of the pitch of doing this uh, the episodic series to begin with was let's let's set it up a little bit like a sitcom where we build like kind of the the area that they live in their their uh office their the neighborhood shops and kind of set a lot of the action there but when we got to the episode where it actually was literally a sitcom that was that was good fun <laughs> yes i well i remember i actually um i had started with season two um originally uh and i don't know why i i can't figure out any reason i guess i assumed like i don't know <laughs> i was like ah the graphics probably don't look as good as season two i'm just gonna start here um and so i've gotten to really enjoy this entire chapter that i've missed um but i still know characters like the soda poppers and mr featherly you know and that sort of thing uh, and of course, Harry Mullman, all that. Um, so I'm like, oh my gosh, like these are where these characters came from. Like, I missed out. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to make sure. Uh, I'll probably have to change the music settings because um, I'm trying to make sure that the game isn't overwhelming you guys. Um, but I know everyone will. The witty dialogue. Sam and Max. Um, and real quick, uh, while I'm thinking about it, while I have this pulled up, uh, we have some donations today. So it turns out that $100 had been donated previously, but the other $150 have been donated so far during the stream. So um, that's from Bill the Cat, who says, you know, go team, uh, Galen Ryder. Uh, uh, so Bill Cat was ten dollars. Galen Ryder twenty dollars. Happy that Sam and Max season one is back. Enjoyed playing it back when the episodes came out, and I enjoyed the commentary on the DVD. <laughs> uh, Harrison Pink with fifty. Thank you. Um, Zachary Burton with twenty. Just glad to donate. Uh, Anonymous for ten. Default Human for twenty. Um, watching the Sam and Max Save the World stream. Thanks for linking to a great cause. And me spicy with twenty dollars. Have some money. So thank y'all so much. For... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank every, you so much. Every bit helps for sure. Um, so now I'm going to try to set this up where I can see when people donate and also see that. Um, but overcomplicated. <laughs> well, I hope... Uh, Wait, who said that they made the menu? Uh, I I did a lot of yeah, it. Gotcha. Um, but it's a lot of it's also stolen art from across the. Oh yeah. <laughs> across the game. Um, you got the gun. You got the bullet holes from the office. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it started off as the office, and it, the idea was, um, just on like the backs of the comic books, and just sort of a lot of around the world of Sam and Max. Steve Purcell likes painting or drawing, basically just piles of interesting garbage like the world's most interesting dr junk drawer basically and i really like that feeling for sam and max so uh the main menu is their desk covered in crap from the season and uh i don't know it was oh, fun for Maybe. sure <laughs> i'm um, all about that shine on the television set Looks it's got to have that shine that's the it's all telltale tool Ooh. oh yeah um and, and then uh the I love this the, setup the, yeah, each episode has a fake comic book cover that we made based on... It started off based on old scraps of marketing assets, and then we eventually remade them uh, or made new stuff over the course of the game. And uh, it was fun working on these these fake comics. Uh, I was terrified the entire time that Steve Purcell would see them and be like, what are you doing? What are you doing to my <laughs> stuff? But he thought they were pretty good. He said that it was a completely bizarre experience to see a bunch of comics that he didn't make. Um, yeah, so. right. <laughs> I love it. And I love the little details of, like, there was the hoagie sandwich next to the Mafia one. And, like, here's the yeah, we tried match to for president. Yeah, we props from all the different episodes. Right. It's fun. I, I'm actually... I haven't had, like, a full chance to just kind of sit and enjoy these. Um, but 
Definitely great work. You're okay, spoiling the season by browsing the menu. No, it's fine. <laughs> no! <laughs> Pay attention to me! Me! The Nicolas Cage villain of this episode. Is there a reason he sounds and looks like Nicolas Cage? My mind. I don't like Who was the inspiration for I thought Hugh Bliss was like a Greg Brady meets <laughs> You mean uh, Brady Culture? Well Brady Culture right. in episode Brady one. Culture, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Brady Culture was like a Greg Brady. Who was it, Dave? Who were you guys thinking? Right, right. It was somebody like that because the the, the whole theme was sort of these um yeah, sort of run down former child stars. I think he was supposed to be somebody from the Brady Bunch, maybe. It's been 14 years. I have a hard time remembering <laughs> this time. <laughs> Let me know, uh, comments, if the game gets to be too loud. Uh, compared to the devs, but thank you for the other $50 donation, Sean. Quit moving around so much, bobblehead. When are we gonna get another case, Sam? Surely the local lawbreakers must miss our esoteric brand of personalized criminal justice. Patience is a sharp razor to swallow, little buddy. Okay, don't scream this time. <gasps> ah! I got it! I got it! Hello? Leave Swiss cheese by the rat hole, or you'll never see your precious phone alive again. Jiminy Christmas Eve in a padlock sweat box. Some misguidedly ballsy felons napped our phone. Eerie. I just went cheese shopping. How did they know? Be sure it's Swiss cheese, right? And be quick about it. Now we're just watching the game. I hate it's yielding good. to extortion, but I have to admit I'm half charmed by the sheer spunk of that oily little perp. Where'd you put the cheese, Max? Gosh, it was hours ago. You know I have the memory of a dried trout. Sadly, yes, I do. Well, it's got to be somewhere in this room. Yes. Sorry, I had to sit quietly for the cutscene. Um, animation just looks so good with these new models. Yeah, it's it's uh, the models are new. The animations are almost all exactly the same. I think. Good old Lou. Uh, Who's Lou John, again? you brought over the some new facial ball, expressions for interactive dialogue. Either it sounded like you made some yourself or stole some from other seasons. But the yeah, we didn't have any facial mood acting in season one, so <clears throat> I brought over stuff from other seasons, or I made the moods myself. Myself. Oh, one, of the, one of the reasons the animation looks a lot better too is it's because the lip sync, the lip sync is just so much better now than we had it this might 14 years handy. ago. <laughs> Don't do that again. It's no longer distracting. It just looks natural. Yep, that and the animation compression is far better for a lot of this stuff. I think. Um, yeah. The the older versions of the Telltale tool would really compress animation down. So I think the like the match. further along like a character's. A skeleton you get from the center of them the shakier some of the animation would get so it looks um it just looks a lot less janky now between the lip sync and the smoother animation compression yeah i um well i noticed like you know i being a huge fan of devil's playhouse i always love the scenes where sam gets like really visibly angry because someone's messing with max so when i saw that when brady Coulter, spoiler kidnaps him um <laughs> I was like, ooh, I love that. I love that look on <laughs> Sam. When I got this thing, I thought it would be useful. Where else it's, would we keep the pieces of paper that we're never going to look at again? I saw some tutorial text about how to use the controls. It was red. Is that, is that new stuff that you added, or is that just yes. the update we that did is, before? That was new stuff. I think season two had some tutorial stuff, but it was like a redone version of this puzzle, but where Sam and Max would break character and talk to the camera and say, now that we're interrogating this rat, here's how you can yeah. use the dialogue system. But even that wasn't 100%. We didn't know what to do with it. So we just put a couple of very terse lines of tutorial text at the top of the screen now. And it, it yeah. knows if you're playing a gamepad or on a mouse or whatever, you know, it's classic stuff. Yeah, that that whole update was actually because of my mother-in-law. After, after we shipped this, I sat her down in front of it because... She doesn't play games at all, and she had no idea what I did for a living, and I wanted to show her. And so, and I thought, you know, this, this is a good uh, sort of um, break-in game for somebody who doesn't play Don't games at all. Very, very I'm friendly. saving it for a it's like watching experiment. a movie. And the things that she didn't understand 
uh like for example you're supposed to be driving that big dog around and you get to tell him where to go you know she was just watching him <laughs> i didn't realize that she was supposed to be him or anything and a lot of sort of disconnect with how you were actually supposed to interact with the game and i, I got a whole article on gama sutra about tutorial design because of this specific tutorial and that's why we did the, the update for the next season it's just yeah, wasn't, wasn't quite doing its job before I, I like that she must have just said you know this is a very boring show dave after sam just sure. sat there breathing <laughs> for 90 <laughs> seconds well literally <laughs> you know, it, there's there's a they say something like you know we gotta we better find that cheese and then she just sat there and watched for a while well, and then she and said, and said how how long should I wait for them to find cheese? Again. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. That's awesome. Oh, there it There's is. There's the cheese. I um, oh yes, and I love that y'all. Um, obviously, season one didn't have all the little tools that the other seasons had, like the um hotspot tool. I love that. Oh, um, they just show hotspots? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it helps me a ton because, you know, I'd, I'd like to know where everything is. And then the updated inventory is very nice. Um, all in this little cardboard box that one of them is lugging around. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's actually the inventory from Sam and Max Season 3. We took it and decided to unify that because uh, it was the nice one. And Dude. it also was a call, it was a callback to Sam and Max Hit the Road, which has that big cardboard box in its presentation. <laughs> do y'all have um plans or, or have y'all already started remastering season two can i ask that um <laughs> all right <laughs> say what we were doing <laughs> well, we're, 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 we're celebrating fun. season one tonight yes <laughs> yes good good point <laughs> hey Max. um when is it sam all right, I am. I'm just kind of messing around. I, I know exactly how to beat this episode, so I'm trying not to like, you know, skip. Ooh, look at that. Too much of stuff. Take that, you. So I, I'll I'll say cards. to you what I said. Sam, no, I have a similar story to Dave's innocent. about my own mother, who innocent? who believes she's the not. biggest fan in the history of of games that that I, that I've been a part of. Um, but she's never made it out of this room. And uh, just yesterday, I think I said to her. I said to her, well, you've got a cheat. You've got cheese. He wants Swiss cheese. It needs holes. What do you have that could make holes? And she had a gotcha moment that said, a gun. <laughs> got her to blow and this cheese away. Years, the of the benevolent our greatest burn. fan is now like through her first puzzle. The members of Sam and um, so this like bit where Jimmy Tutis gets interrogated. We, over the course of doing this remaster, we kept playing the game over and over again as a group, and it kind of came up that this opening, it's like the first big tone change, and it's like the, the reward for solving the first big puzzle, and we wanted to make it a little bit more show-offy, so we got Jared to write a custom piece of music just for interrogating Jimmy Two Teeth, and we also had them turn off the lights and turn it into a real interrogation, which I think is pretty fun. Oh, yeah. So... Right, it, it's on the because screen. We can now. Yes, <laughs> I thought just even the light change um, made this scene so much better. Because um, I mean, the the first one was fine with the interrogation, but it's literally just slamming on the desk and talking to him. But now it's like true interrogation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, with the sort of hangout office music kept playing, and we're like, ah, oh, you're you know you're roughing up this rat. Might as well <laughs> might as well make the music sound a little more. A little more spicy so yeah. we, we actually we got jared to write a new track based on the cutscene music well, that he wrote 13 you. years now, ago for when you throw jimmy out the hinge. window there's now a sort I'm of like maybe version of it that advanced to this whole scene colorfully gruesome fashion let me at him sam no, i didn't even know there was new Man, music here his. but like i can totally hear it and it's cute uh, also those little dialogue heads in the new dialogue ui were drawn for us by steve which is pretty cool so he oh. did a tiny bit of art for this game wow. uh, well it looks yeah. great that's why they're they're so high end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me pry open his skull and look for a conscience, Sam. Yeah, yeah, I'm shaking like bacon here. A hey, dog face. Your partner's giving me a headache. I love the I heart coffee mug, but it's like a, you know, realistic <laughs> art. Instead of just the. You mentioned a headache. Would you like heart. some aspirin? 
Oh, and while I'm at it, is there anything else I can do to make you comfortable? That Are is thirsty, probably perhaps? the exact Life's coffee mug right? that Steve well, would have on his own now you desk. It, I really don't like being up here, so and would subsequently I draw into the comics. Like, I, I know <laughs> personally oh, really? that he would often draw things into his artworks so that he could write oh, them off. Just weird things that just he wanted to buy. The phone. Yeah, yeah. Never oh, it's research. I need to own this because I have to draw a picture of it. Oh, by the way, we have uh, new donations. Uh, Jesse Wagstaff with $20, Yunker with $20, and Eric Parsons with 50 Eric, thank you so much. <laughs> um, let's hang Don't Jimmy like out to dry. How'd you like it if I oh, Eric Parsons, who probably hey, set up this win. camera angle that we're seeing Wait, right now. <laughs> I you, I'm known yeah. for my this new, slightly more cinematic and widescreen it's version true. of some of these. You should see him trying Eric to try went through and just guy. kind of Right, bumped right. everyone's and old cameras into a slightly better mercy. better place gooey, like um, well like things that have fallen onto pavement from a great height post-its on the wall before i saw one those were always moments. there they just yeah, they were blurry just couldn't see them ah, for the love of yeah kim's I original post-it scribblings are now it. extremely high res and visible for all well, to see yes. actually there's a lot of art in a lot of those environments that you just couldn't see before like once you get to the theater you'd see it like we built a nice Full 360 theater, but the way the game was presented, you just never got to go. really see it. So when we updated the nav cams and everything, we just kind of made it so you could see a lot of the original art so much better than you could before. We've got to get down to the corner store right away. I thought it was really funny to end the scene in the dark now. Yeah, like I. That... It was kind of an accident, but it's kind of great. It made me smile. They're getting Jimmy and are just like, yeah, all right. Because, <laughs> I mean, the inter inter interrogation's over, but if you don't flip the switch, yeah. it's just like, oh, well, off is just in the dark now. <laughs> yeah, the, the, um, the, the visuals, I mean, you know, just, just hanging out of that window, you know, the lighting looks so good, all these scenes. Um, definitely changes like uh, I'm about to show off Sybil's office and like just a lighting change in there like makes the whole atmosphere different oh I, yes you can run in this game for those who have played the original um, what? which was a nice change <laughs> welcome you look like you could use some therapy not from a wide eyed circus freak like you hey I know you Hey, it's hey, Sybil. Right. You're one of the lovable scamps from that 70s TV oh, show about the singing soda jerks. The soda poppers, yeah. Hi, peepers. We loved your show. I, I want to say. What you're talking about. My name is Sybil Pandemic, licensed psychotherapist. Licensed psychotherapist. Uh, I want to say. Um, I know this was like, um, you know, I, I haven't played the original game enough to notice it, and I'm sure it was in the original game. But I love when, if you talk to the different soda poppers in a different order, the dialogue changes um, based on, like, you know, you getting that information for the first time. Um, like, Sam will always announce, like, you know, it's about those soda, soda jerks, you know, and either Max will say soda poppers or, like, um, Specs will say, like, no, we were called the soda poppers. You know, and I, I love those little details for sure. Are you sure your name is Sybil, not Peepers? Absolutely. Oh, and thank y'all, Travis, for the thirty dollars, and B. Rogstad for the fifty dollars. You guys are amazing. Where's your gun? Violence is not It's Brett who is the game. Sam, we're dealing with a dangerously delusional psychotic here. Obviously. I um, is there any? Uh, <laughs> I can't get over Peepers' stare. Um. I definitely remember the soda poppers from season two, but with with these cleaned up models and everything, it's just those huge, big old blue eyes. Sybil's normally a girl's name, isn't it? Must have been tough while they, you were growing up. They aren't up. any less horrifying and frightening than they, than they ever were. So that's no. <laughs> Excuse me for a minute, would you? Sure. I didn't ask him, but he's like, "Do you have uh, Do you have any ID?" It's like, "Yeah, there's a." There's a um, <laughs> psychotherapist uh, document on the wall there. It's like, well, anything that has your name or a picture? Oh it's like, well, I can draw I a picture if you want. <laughs> starting to invent life stories for the <laughs> That'll make you feel better. I've got to sit down. 
Um, oh Dave, God. who came up with He's the idea here? for the soda Helicopter. packers? That is a good question. Ma'am. The idea Max. of them, we're freelance well, the idea of them was mainly just nice because to we Arrest needed to have more characters than we could afford to draw, <laughs> and so we decided to make them triple to make the art budget smaller. He's my pal. Um, there were just too many things going on in town. It's like, yeah, we need a guy over here who's doing this stuff, and a guy oh, in the um, sidelines office is doing that. Sociopathic child. Um, so that's how they became the the sort the sort of trio of evil. What's the charge? They, uh, Assault, <laughs> kidnapping, identity theft. Those are good charges. But they they were competing uh, show with Wilbur. Brady Culture back in the day. The, in the Soda Poppers was its own show, and Brady Culture was his own Gadzooks. star of some well, of some cases can be very thing when he was younger, and right? Delicate. Right. Those, those gosh dang soda poppers stole his 70s lineup because they were on a different channel <laughs> at the same right. time. Although actually, um, now that I look closely, yeah, now in the in the intervening years, I've completely forgotten the character dynamics between the Brady and the soda poppers. You know, they're all basically washed up uh, child stars. Yep. Uh, yeah, who a lot of, who a lot of did something to who all that time ago? It just hasn't. We've let bygones be bygones with take? the backstory Soothing between Brady and the, or the perhaps some sort of invasive surgery. Shock treatment. Yeah, Shock they have treatment. sort of just boiled away to being vaguely annoying, petulant former stars who appear in the. Sorry, I don't speak psychotherapist. Mad at you. The um. When, you, when a chase scene happens later, and I, I was chasing after Wizard, and it's like, why'd you run from the police? And he's like, well, you're always seeing on TV where, where cops are beating up people just because they were former child stars <laughs> and i'm just like yeah <laughs> like uh, all right wizard that's a that's valid the soda poppers are for some reason often um under the misconception that sam and max are there to like beat them up or kill them which i i mean i guess i guess one of the first things you do is drop a bowling ball on one of their heads yeah and, but, you, and yeah. you shoot, a, and you you shoot at the car in the car scene that's so <laughs> in uh in Season two, episode one, when you first see uh, Wizard outside oh, of the Sam, North Pole, the his first line of dialogue is just, oh, you guys are going to kill me, aren't you? And it's like, <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> every time when he's just like, oh, crap, like Wizard thinks he's in Breaking Bad or something in that moment where he's just like, my life has ended. And uh, it's the farthest thing from your mind when you get to him right there because you're happy to visit Santa Claus or whatever. Oh, great. I told my, my son, who is six and a half, what I was Boy, doing this sure evening, and he was like, "Oh, that's, I want to play that time. game. Can we, can we play that game together?" And the first thing that um, came into my mind was that scene where you drop the bowling ball on somebody's head. <laughs> uh, um, at least that's cartoony sure. violence, you know. I mean, granted, in real life that would be traumatic, you know, but it is. But he, he sort of lives to reenact cartoony violence. The kind uh, of person he is. So I don't know. We don't have any bowling balls around the house. It might be okay. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Real quick, I want to say, excuse us, we've got important um, things to do. When I, I got this game a few days in advance. Thank y'all for the the copy, Emily. Um, got me the Steam key and all that. Um, and this, uh, spray paint can, <laughs> not being in the other location, threw me it's off. <laughs> it's it's a, it is a better better. location. It is much more in the open. Um, but people are looking at the old walkthroughs and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I said to Emily, like, oh no, I think this is a bug. Like, I can't progress. It's not here behind the DeSoto. Um, and she said, yeah, a couple of other people have already complained about it being a bug, but it is very much an improvement. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, we, we play tested with a bunch of new players, and that was the common theme was nobody could find it on the car. So we <laughs> tried to figure out a better place for it. We also redesigned the can because before it looked more like a like a Slurpee cup or something. It's so I, I, I modeled a new can that looks more like actual deep. spray paint. And the metal has a sparkly, sparkly print on it. Though. There's a sparkly on it too. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. Yes. Yeah, we didn't want anyone to get stuck on one of the first puzzles. But of course now everybody is because they're right. going based on memory or everyone, walkthrough. Everyone's cheating and like the, <laughs> the information's yeah. wrong. Yeah, or it's just, you know, fear, if you've played an adventure game enough times, police are you just remember all of it and you can almost Violently autopilot your way through it. You Mama Bosco was not always on the texture outside of Bosco's. That was a little... God. I was wondering that. Fun detail. Hold on, Bosco. It was, What's the problem? 
there for no reason other than it was a fun detail. We tried to think of ways to um, tie this season forward, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, hint at this upcoming stuff. That's just one of those things. He's right there. Hey, it's another one of the. See, with uh, Devil's the Playhouse one the being the one that I played the issues? most. You know, yeah, like, wizard. I know Mama Bosco He's really well. Um, oh, so when I saw her face on the sign, I was like, oh, oh, was this always Mama Bosco's inconvenience store before Bosco took over? Um, and Mama Bosco became a ghost. <laughs> oh, yeah, if you... One of us that, needs that, to that, take the whole Mama Bosco, Bosco changeover is in the no, back half of Season oh, 2. With the Munchkin terrorists in my store. Yeah. Maybe you haven't gotten exactly. Gosh, what is I haven't heard of Wizards. I can hardly no, remember he's season two he's compared to videos season three. I didn't even order. Brady Culture's eyebrow. What is that? Oh, it's something bad. I can tell you. That. Oh, real quick. Video. Thank y'all so much to Seg hey, for the twenty dollars and Sasquatcher General for the fifty dollars. I don't know. And we've passed the five hundred like goal. So thank y'all. Oh, awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, and to answer your question, does ad revenue go into the charity? Uh, yeah, I, I believe the JDRF. If they receive enough money to pull out, which for Twitch, I believe is a $100. You have to reach $100 before you can even have access to money. But yeah, um, all that money goes to charity. Um, I don't even know if they've reached the $100, like, you know, where they have to be, but. Any other heinous terrorist activities to report? Yes. He Good old keeps using my wizard. Bathroom. Who knows what he's doing in there? The serial leak know. taker so we've and got an video, video dumper. dumper and serial leak taker. <laughs> Not even the National Guard can help us now. To do the infinite Bosco chat? I... Oh, that's asking if he has. I don't. Do you have any? X, uh, y, do you have any? Yes. I think we got it. Okay. It anything deep. else? How many uh, dialogue options are there? <laughs> We'd like to patronize your fine establishment, my good man. By patronize you, he means we want Dave, to Dave, how many dialogue options? Not <laughs> we probably will, but that's not what he meant. I, I remember off the top of my head, like, me? weasel on a stick, so and then I didn't you bother Bosco anymore. <laughs> uh, excellent question. A lot. On a stick? <laughs> Do you have any two-handed broad swords? I love all the character nope. lighting in this scene. Max looks so nice. So Do soft. Have any so, yeah. Of famous <laughs> I love his ears. Nope. So so soft and. Do you have any candy? You forget how boys? dangerous Max is. Nope. <laughs> Do you have any exiled political dissidents? Nope. Do you have any weapons of mass destruction? Who's asking? <laughs> he said no. Nope probably to all genuine Brendan Ferguson dialogue. I think. What have you he got? Usually wrote the Pasco. Well, I've still Pasco got scenes. that big sale on cheese. Oh yeah, cheese! I want that. And I might have another item of interest behind the counter. All right, what's Except behind the counter? Except your thinly veiled invitation to ask about the item behind the counter. Oh, it's just a little something. I like to call a tear gas grenade launcher. Tear gas grenade launcher? Oh yeah, I really want that. I it's quickly caught on innovation. the Bosco's uh, no scams, guarantee. for lack of better I really words. Close to you right now. Mm. Um, his Bosco Tech innovations, where it's a salad tosser with onions shoved in it, you know, and we'd like that. Of course, of course. Grenade launcher. That'll be ten thousand dollars. It's all very high-end equipment. I, I'm not sure what we'll you're talking about. Yeah, like I mean, tickets. and it does come in handy for multiple episodes. So white collar crime um, drive. Where can't complain. Criminals go to rejoice in their ill-gotten gains. After we blow this possible yeah, it's stand, a, a, we can go fun, but actually kind of challenging design the most. constraint. Right in the you know, he's got to have something that's in the I episode say, but that's good that seems really exotic and, and super helpful and that turns out to any... kind of just be hmm, something that you could have come together yourself. Well, you can always just start oh, over junk. again. Good idea. Do you have any weasels on a stick? Nope. Nothing for us right now. Okay. I love the simple fact that because this game's we'll in widescreen now, Bosco, but right now it's time to get up there's just so much more to see at all moments. Stop that crazy man before um, he kills us all. So that combined with the lighting, combined with like the cleaned up models, well, it is on special. All just very pretty. And we are running it was cool. Low. To, I mean, we all knew just from working on the games that there was a ton of really nice art in the games, but the what? the oh. sort of 
tech and limitations at the time oh, kind of actually yeah. hid a lot of the really nice stuff from you, but like this shot of Bosco's looks awesome now where like the lottery tickets are this tiny little detail that, that just fills in the edge of the frame. Um, yeah, between the new lighting and um, the breadth and the new camera work that Eric added in, I think it really does an amazing job of highlighting all the awesome stuff that was already there that you just couldn't really even notice. Did y'all have to, um, was it, was it a thing of y'all had to add anything else to the scene because of the wide angle or was it just, uh, some camera tricks that y'all had? I think like on some of the really wide shots, like the street outside of Sam and Max's office, we might've needed to extend hey, some of Wizard. the deep background no buildings, but most of the my time just call me it was just reframing so enemies, the, the stuff that was already there like a little I've bit more met. cleanly. Everyone yeah, there's some Wizard. spots, um... And on the street, we had that we added some graffiti to the right really side doing? buildings based on the new map cams. Take one. They're free. Um, in season two, in some of the TV studio scenes, My there's also new geometry to put on the sides oh, or yeah. to frame the walk boxes better. Hit with the dentists. Gee, I wonder why. Well, hey kids, guzzle I, uh, soda like the soda poppers. I noticed in episode so four, um, at the White House, you can see a lot more Max of like a little, um, what they're called, the little arm somewhere. that blocks a car as it's coming and going. Um, <laughs> you can see more over in that direction compared to the. Well, that was, yeah, that, that was I, I, did, I put that in originally to block the walk box, right? so so that Sam because right. The way it was, Sam could walk against an invisible oh, wall, nice. and I, I hate that sort of that thing is. where you're just walking up against nothing. Yes. So I put in that barrier, but then after I did that, then Jake had the crazy idea to about making it so you could leave the war room directly with the um, TV screens in there. So then we actually made it so you could see the gate opening and uh, the DeSoto driving through it. Brady Culture's eyeball for awesome. ocular fitness. Yeah, I, overly complicated that for um, yeah. So revolutionary. Yeah, that's like the thing that, that, that we would have never thing. allowed if, <laughs> if it was a normal what video game development. There's two TV oh, screens that you could click on that then that show a cutscene on the TV of them leaving the outside environment that you're not in, just so that you can save a click on leaving the room faster. It was good, John. It was an essential content to put into the game. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's awesome. There's lots of things like that where it's just so extraneous, but uh, it was fun to do. Public restrooms, unholy temples to all things unsanitary. I wouldn't go in there for all the tea and tea. Your F, what I also love the way Wizard is running. Oh, wait, Wizard's speed. <laughs> yeah, did you change something about the way that's presented? Uh -oh. that. No, no, I actually didn't change that effect at all. Time yeah. out for exactly number right. one. Just always good. Looks like you was always a gates. really fast-moving motion blur that fooled everyone into thinking it was extremely expensive. Yeah, I did that originally. It's very simple. It's just a blurred, stretched image. Looks good. You really love someone. Give them the gift of cheese. I actually oh, I thought to see the look it would have been changed it. from the original. I played through the original episode of episode one, what the? and I was like, oh, no, it was always Time like that. Time out for number one. Most of the visual effects, a, lot, more a lot of the stuff stayed the kind of how it was originally built, but way. I tried to spruce up every effect, <laughs> oh, and I changed a few when things when into particle effects, because we never had particle <laughs> effects originally classic. in the Telltale classic, engine. Classic. Um, like the spray paint looked like crap originally. It was just like ugly cone thing. Cone and switch that out to a particle emitter. Am I allowed to answer JDRF's question of where does he keep his gun with that's none of your damn business? Yes. <laughs> I feel like I'll, I feel like I can um, get a pass to being a classic Max line. Um... That's where all the, I mean, like, just know your business. Hammer space, don't worry about it. John, did you upres the pee puddle at all, or is that the original pee puddle? <laughs> uh, we may have smoothed the... it out. I actually can't remember. The, well, the pee puddle the... originally came from the honey puddle in Bone. Bone, <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, that was one of my favorite assets to reuse. <laughs> was the pee puddle rebound? The great. <laughs> Hey, someone's got to do it, you know? Um, <laughs> that's so funny that it used to be a honey puddle in bone. Um, wait. 
Well, I mean, obviously, like, you know, the cow in episode two is just the cow from Bone. Uh, okay, it actually isn't. Is it not? <laughs> um, <laughs> let's be real here, John. The models are actually a bit different. They're, they're, the Sandmax cow is based on the Bone cow, but the model was changed. It's still a pretty derivative cow, though. Let's be yeah, real. Yeah, it's a cow. Right? It's only so much you can it's do with it. <laughs> It was it was like um, we were always trying to design these things with, with the idea like we were on the back lot and here were a bunch of props that we had left over from some other show and like yep. we use this could be you know this is always uh, just always trying to save a few minutes by reusing the cow. In uh, Sybil's closet, there's actually a few Easter eggs. There's a couple of callbacks to other Telltale games. They change, they change every each episode. There's a Bowen reference. There's a, um, a uh, Wolf Among Us reference. Can you believe a couple other things. Paid for this. Mm. That's awesome. This I'll have to look at it real quick. Uh, and yes, the graffiti is uh, randomized. There's different graffiti that Sam will do. <laughs> now this is quality television. I remember this scene annoyed Brett to have to relight because in the in the old version of it we could just steal the light bake from the actual street environment, but now that we're lighting it all in real time, he had to bring the entire outdoors into the office just so you could look out the window. Well, we've admired our handiwork. One of the few places where I think it actually was harder to light than it was in the original version. Poor Spex, he's dead now. <laughs> we've officially knocked out Wizard and killed Spex, so. Now we're going after people. Okay, I'll have to real quick glance at uh, Sybil's closet. My new run animation. Well, not new animation, but new to this game. I can glance in there. Yeah, you, you get little... a better shot of it once she first comes out. Yeah, yeah, I, man, I didn't even think to look a little... It's a, it's a stuffed cow from Bone up there, but there's a couple <laughs> other things you can't see very well. Whee! That's cool. Hey, peepers. Fibble! Right. Oh, Excuse well. me for a minute, would oh. you? Sure! I miss my... Are they going to update Sam and Max Hit the Road? Uh, uh, what's what's the... you, know, you got you got to ask Disney about updating Sam and Max at the road. Is Disney? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is a Lucas Arts? Yeah. All right. Well. Yep. No is the answer. Is <laughs> to that. Um, they may make it a live action movie, but they won't remake. <laughs> Where are we going, Sam? <laughs> All right, let's, let's go, go cruise for lawbreakers. Max. Give a ticket to yeah, a rich we'll criminal. A, a live action movie that. Uh, Still, ultimately, is 100% computer animated, and people just call it live action. Yeah, live action. Um, where it's live action because you know the characters have no way, Sam, facial expressions. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but I may have accidentally chewed through our brake lines. No, I don't think you did mention that. I guess we'll just have to slow down by violently rear-ending other motorists. Already planning on it, little All right. Buddy. The good old. Good old DeSoto scenes, getting to drive down the street. Yeah, we have shadows and stuff now. It's all it's all fancy. Wow. It's pretty. Attention fellow drivers. If for any reason we need to address you, we'll indicate it simply by creating What do you think so far, Dave? Thank you. It looks great. I love the lighting especially. This is also looking really nice. Yeah. I remember how fun this was to play where just Driving up on the sidewalk and plowing through. Yeah, I'm just I'm just goofing around <laughs> right now. <laughs> Take the wheel, little buddy. <laughs> With pleasure. Yeah, just hitting a row of parking meters was like the, the most viscerally satisfying thing I'd ever done yeah. in an adventure game. Sam one, it turns out. Like zero. <laughs> yep. I, I'm not gonna lie, I had no idea what I was doing the this first time. I was trying to give warning. out a ticket. Um, granted, I didn't. Pay attention enough because the game basically spells it out for you, Come but on, I. We're freelance police. It took me a minute to think about shooting Ergo. their we car the <laughs> at all. Oh, why did you stop me? This might be one of those puzzles that you're too nice a guy to solve. Yeah, your I was like, I was like, oh man, like I gotta catch someone in the act of doing something 
<laughs> it's illegal instead of thinking like the freelance police. Ten thousand dollars? What? Are you crazy? Oh, one moment. Allow me yeah, to I'm not sure that's as funny test. now. I've never noticed that the license plate says con man I am that uh, Espeon just pointed out. Well, I want to say that it's different on different cars, and I might be incorrect about that. They because are. All, all, all of the yeah. different cars have various criminal enterprises on the license plates, I think. Because the, the license plate I saw last time said um, a random driver, I think it said. Okay, oh, good. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, if, if I remember correctly, the name of this road is White Collar Crime Drive. Yes, so what? criminals with a lot of money. Ooh, White Collar Crime Drive. To, oh, to yeah. shoot up the tail lights. Yeah, because I know this uh, car behind us. I'm pretty sure you can look at its license plate. Uh, and this one's also Con Man. Um, it's the same guy. <laughs> he, he followed us. <laughs> John, which ball model is that in the car that we use? Oh, uh, it's one of them. I can't John. remember the guy's name. John? Name is... John? He has a big nose. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, he's always been a Bowen character model, I think, Who's since there? the original release. Yeah, it's just you. It's yeah, I modified it a little bit, but... <clears throat> so it's a different guy, actually. They show yeah. up in the just like a different cow. Not the same cow. Not the same John Oaks. Oh, um, real quick, uh, JDRF is asking if we should do a soundtrack giveaway, and I think that's a great idea. Um, so we actually have a few Steam keys for the soundtrack made by the lovely, um, oh, <laughs> Emerson. Jared, 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 Johnson. Yeah, Jared Emerson Johnson. Thank you. I was like, I can remember Emerson. I was like, wait. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and yes, uh, we have some keys for the soundtrack. So uh, type in exclamation mark win in the chat to get a chance to win. Um, contract Steam. <laughs> I almost put $10,000 in the VR. It have been <laughs> That's the shortcut to win. Yeah, you didn't know that. So, <laughs> ready for that save the ten thousand dollars no, until you can find Brady Culture and pay him off. Sweet alligator dentures soaking in formaldehyde. That was close. Quick before it starts. What? Ignore that. Hello, I'm Brady Culture. Ignore what? <laughs> you may Nothing. remember me from Culture's Clubhouse. <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> oh, there was he just already, a ran for he already ignored it. This is um you are about to see This is a moment that is weirdly hugely up so <laughs> updated even though it doesn't seem like it in that in the original version of this Brady culture was actually stuffed inside of the TV and shrunk uh, and now it's actually just a render texture like it's actually a flat image projected onto the TV like it usually would be and on top of that um Jared actually went back to this track and added the live instruments that this this piece of music reappears very um, briefly inside of the music uh, in the final showdown of the final episode. So he had live musicians play it then, so he went back and added the live stuff into this one little cutscene when a flat picture of Brady Culture hypnotizes Jimmy Tucci. So that's the that's the level of quality we're we're shooting for here. Well, the theater is actually in the TV now too. That's true. That's right. There's a little bit of the theater back there. Yep. That could have just been a flat. It's okay. On we, this we, only the highest quality really content. Real thing. Look at the the buildings of outside of Tamax's office are real now, too, instead of it just being a JPEG poppers. of buildings. I love shows yep. that destroy all our yep. cherished delusions about the stars we This is still love. just a texture. <laughs> but it's During far the higher end. Heyday, I've never Specs seen the, the back wall the um, in the tail on the Max, but it's like all these different animal tails. Who never missed a spot. Backstage, though, things were quite a bit dirtier. Spec's obsession with perfection caused massive delays in shooting and infuriated. <laughs> I actually haven't seen this. He famously uh, demanded over I think, I think you can watch, if you use the TV you in this episode, you can up. watch behind the scenes the content on all three soda poppers and Brady Culture. It. Really? John, I never saw these updated Specs stills that are good. Seen in public. Yeah, that was all Emma. Make one that was really good. Adventure into celebrity tag team I love, wrestling, you know, getting pinned yeah. in a but in his background, it was all dirtier. Wipe down the ring with a dish rag. 
The meltdown utterly enraged his tag team partner and good friend, the dog from My Mother the Dog, who stormed out this of the This documentary was all apparently word. filmed this morning on the street. <laughs> right, <laughs> right outside <laughs> on the straight and narrow. <laughs> always keep it in. <laughs> there you go. Uh, also, congratulations, Electric Bongo, for winning one of the um, soundtrack Steam keys. I appreciate uh, JDRF, uh, Emily, for <laughs> taking care of the Steam key giveaway, because I was like, ah, I have no idea how to do that on someone else's channel. <laughs> She's like, alright, I'll... Oh. Um, but yes, don't forget, guys, this is a charity live stream for JDRF, uh, the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. All money donated goes to help fight type 1 diabetes. Um, now I need to actually give this money to Bosco before I forget. I love, I love that in every episode, the amount of money that Bosco requires for his next invention just skyrockets. And one of the boys asks him about it and he's like, well, all I know is I keep bumping up the price and y'all keep paying it. So who's the idiot now? <laughs> it's like, fair. It's we got your tear good. gas money right here. <laughs> really? Like, well, well right, can't argue with that go. sales pitch. <laughs> one tear gas grenade lost. This is a salad shooter filled with onions. But it works. Trust me. Trust me. Now put that away before someone gets hurt. What do you mean? Poor Sam. Been knocked unconscious two times this episode. <laughs> the 10,000 just cover the cost of materials, you know? Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. It's okay, everybody. $10,000 right. covering the cost of materials. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so now I think we just have uh, good old peepers. And yeah, someone mentioned it earlier, but of course you can throw Max in the sky. Did you do that in the original game? In the season? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I figured you could. I, uh, I knew that was always a staple in season two and three, at least. I remember getting trophies in season three for like throw max in every room, you know, <laughs> like all that. So that's a um, that's a happy accident because we just did that because trying to pathfind Sam with Max running around all over the place and <laughs> trying to avoid him just wasn't going to happen. So we fun. decided to just smack him into the sky, and uh, that just stuck. Hey, you're fogging my glasses. And because people liked Quit. it so much. Um, and then we made it into a gameplay element for with, for trophies by season three. Oh, Sybil. Yes. It works great. Uh, the other Sybil. What is that? Yeah, it was on oh, license for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it will make you cry. Ambidextrous says, do you have any past its prime dehydrated banana drink? <laughs> I'm <not> banang. <laughs> Oh. Whoa, where'd he go? Hey, there he is. You attacked a licensed psycho. I didn't uh How could smack you? him in the oh, head. Just quick comes enough. naturally, I guess. Too slow. Oh, he's got that caffeine rush. I gotta I'm so tempted to spray his eyes with spray paint instead of the sudden oh, Sybil. Let's click on it. And don't worry, everyone, this is, uh, Please, Sam. when I me. got the remaster, yeah, I beat episode one, episode two, to most of three, and then Just played kidding. a little of a four and five. You more. And Sweet point James is that I beat episode one, like, five times within the last week. <laughs> oh, my, <laughs> oh, so you know this great. game. Yes, so great. I, uh... <laughs> Wait a second. So luckily I'm not, like, totally lost ruins. right now. The dog and bunny will rue the day they crossed me! Rue the day, I say! <laughs> the first time, though, I spent a nice long work, time, you yeah, know, obviously with any Telltale puzzle that you haven't come across state. yet. Take um, control of your mind. But, I don't think he can hear like, I, I was sure in the can. dream psychosis dead. thing, trying Minor to figure detail. it out Destroy before I knew I needed the, um, it's APD form wow. or whatever. Hey. 
Um, what am I doing here? I was just in there forever for no reason. I was just kind of goofing Sybil? around, but um. My name's not Sybil. It's Peepers. Oh, yes, it is. That's funny. Are you okay? We, uh... How do you feel? <laughs> We talked about that. John was like, why can you go in there and do that before you actually need to do it? And there was someone unusual in your dream, I think we decided to stick with it because that was the original design. Well, it's very, um, you know, it's very, tell. it's very, oh, you can kind of see in the closet right now for those who are looking for those little Easter eggs. Um... remember checking in at Brady Culture's home for former child stars. He has his own nut house? Wow, we got a well, meeting. Uh, originally was just sort of a this gray cube. Child stars. So it needed something. Oh, Somebody in chat it. got it right. Yes, no yes it's the mop from the gray cow race. Yep. Oh, yeah. But we need to Good. find it so we can stop the The book is so subtle. I don't know if you, people can tell what it is. I want to help, but I just can't remember where it is. Oh. No, John, what's the book? They went with me. It's okay, from Wolf Among Us. I didn't do anything oh. really embarrassing, did I? Nothing a simple exorcism can't fix. Oh dear! So they said there's more stuff added to each uh, each episode until you then it gets locked. I think in episode four you can't go in there anymore. No. Does she have the like Bosco Tech vodka in there? <laughs> and wine. She's been hoarding wine. <laughs> hey Doc. Hey Sam. It, Thanks for taking um... care of that wacko. I wish there was some way I could repay. When she you. said here, like you know, like oh, you know. I can psychoanalyze you for free. I think that's why I got stuck in the dream thing for a while. Um, but it makes sense in a puzzle mechanic where it's like, okay, well, this new thing has been offered to me. I'm going to need it at some point in time. Um, but of course, I was like, yeah, I'll do it right now. <laughs> I suppose you could psychoanalyze Wait, Do you remember me. why we did that? Yeah, I could count your marbles for you. Why well, a lot of times it's, it's, it's be painful? less about... If we do it um, right. Now, why we let you we do try. things we and more about plans, how we how weird is it to prevent you from doing something for... and then suddenly pop it in later and this just seems right. like one of those things where you know it's okay to have it in and it's it's sort of giving you some stuff where later on you can go oh i, I know what i need to do now I, i've already kind of scratched the surface of this i gotta go do yeah that. I, I love that in adventure games when you're allowed to do something early and you don't know why it's there other than it just kind of feels like it would be there and then way later you get to a puzzle that you're like, oh, it's the psychoanalysis. That's why Sybil yes. can psychoanalyze me. I, I love that. Yeah, kind of it makes, makes the exploration a little bit fun if uh, there's some, you know, some, some stuff you don't quite mind. understand. Is yeah. Right. I, and I like little things like, um, the in your dreams. Out of you know, it, big um, you're not allowed to take What's the antenna right now because Max gets wrinkled. upset if you're going to mess up the reception Quick, of the TV. Um, no. Tell us where we but can later when Max is with you, it's like, okay, cool. Stars. Well, now I can, got to stop that now I can get that into anyone else. The home This is like 50% of adventure game design is just nothing. inventing reasons for stuff like that. You could actually remove the antenna at one there? time Are you because kidding? The, the, it's still in there in the dialogue file. Um, we must have taken it out at some well, point that was and made it only so, so you can only do it once Max has been kidnapped. Uh, or why. Or Brenda was like, oh, let's do that. Uh, Larsenio donated fifty dollars. Thank you so much. Also, hi Bozik in the uh, Twitch chat. Bozik is Jared. Well, we've been Composer. talking him up a little bit. He's Hello. good at it. Good old Jared. I was. I was telling them about how I was asking about Sam and Max in our Walking Dead stream. <laughs> it was not what you were there to talk about, but I appreciate me being able to gush to you for a bit. Um, Take control of your mind. Destroy the intruder in your dreams. Nicely done, Sam. You're a natural. Where am I? Who are you? Um, Don't worry. We're free. Get your Can we do another? Please! Soundtrack, no! uh, Steam Key giveaway. He's getting away in that truck. Quick, follow that. Sword. I don't know how easy it is for you to reset that on your end. Hurry, I Sam. love He's getting away. the song in the background of this chase scene. I can't see you. Watch out. <laughs> I'm out for number one. 
Oh. By the way, this is the uh, scene where the day will is slowly transitioning to night. Take the wheel, little buddy. Truly our most expensive content. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great. It's a great feel to have the world be yes! lived in, you know, like that that extra life added. Don't shoot. You kill them too fast Aside to see the, the whole day change. Your truck. Why would you think they'd shoot you? <laughs> Except well, for the it, obvious sport you know, value, of course. It's just it's good. You always see cops uh, on the news beating JDRF up some says, guy wasn't just because song he's a Jared former surprise? child I feel star. like the answer to that was kind of yes. Dream of hurting Did Jared just stars. turned in a version just of the music with a soda popper song in the background? Is that oh, correct, why Dave? Didn't you say to your so? memory? It's right over there, across the street. This was not commissioned. Jumping elephant fleas. I do. I do not remember. I don't either. He's he's in the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he, Jared's um, answering that he remembers doing some crazy stuff in those days, which doesn't, which isn't surprising. I, I feel like this was a surprise too, but a good one. Oh yeah, Jared says I had an idea that I wanted to have a big soda poppers theme and a Cultures Clubhouse theme. Uh, it's good. I feel like the soda poppers song appearing hmm. is part of the why there's with there are then subsequently musical numbers in a bunch of other episodes. It's like, oh, this is on the table. Okay. Apparently, it's common in former Everyone sings now. Powers. Symptoms include, uh, let's see, obsession What's with fun money, to do? I always got the right to hairstyling, and an unconscious That's desire good. to marry one's mother. For South. You don't even know. I love means, um, no, I wanted to say I love uh, Pretty Culture's take on his Culture's Clubhouse theme. Uh, him singing it <laughs> with that. Uh, um, I can't even do his voice, but that not monotone, but just. <laughs> Culture's Clubhouse. <laughs> Back to the office. Scene looks a little different. <laughs> uh, it just is way color graded, I think. But otherwise, oh, it it uh, it has a more conical light in it now. The scene was the scene to test color grading, and it might be slightly too color graded. But now it's like that forever. Sorry. No, it's awesome. Oh. I, I, love uh, this, I think the night on the street here's a little more subtle and cool looking, but they yeah. they got it here now. Looks... Yeah, it was really fun to let you go there, have it turn to night when you're driving. It's nighttime, and then when you come back to the street, it's got a different vibe. Yep. Yes. Oh, and then we also set it up so that the nav nav cam, which is just the engine term for the camera when you're walking around like this, it shows Stinky's Diner on camera for the first time now that it's nighttime as well. Oh, nice. Um, I was so used to Stinky as a character uh, that... I, you don't ever go to the diner in this game, do you? Nope, um, it's closed all season. Oh, uh, really bad food. <laughs> cool. There you go. I was like, oh, Stinky's Diner. And then I was like, oh, wow, I can't even cross the nope. street in this game. Never mind. A stinky. Stinky or girl stinky. Uh, in... <laughs> that really bad food sign was actually a callback to hit the road. We didn't originally have that the Telltale version of this game. It was one of those things I was looking back at the reference of Hit the Road and trying to find things to bring into this to make it all feel more cohesive. Yeah, I, I get the sense that people were maybe a little scared of putting specific Hit the Road references in, or maybe it was just you think find I your own identity. But by disorder? Santa Max Ooh, Season 3, interesting. you go inside Max's Sometimes inventory and, uh, and it's see. like Obsession with you're just money? inside Santa Max Violent Hit the Road. So it's like, okay, well, that... And that damn broke. We might as well put some, some of that stuff hey, back I in. Because Bosco's was always in Sam and Max Hit the Road. That was the name of the store in uh, in their office in that game. Although you never really meet Bosco and Hit the Road. How do ink blots work? And can we make them ourselves? That's awesome. I had no idea. It's easy. I just show you some pictures and you tell me what you see. Your responses can reveal things like obsessions or uh, obsessions. I totally Take a look at this missed. And tell me what you see what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Whatever the <laughs> oh, I totally missed it, so I'm just shooting in the Susan dark. Lucci holding an Emmy. I it's see. randomized every time, for now, those who don't know. Right now I'm going Pigeons for fame. On the at Man's Chinese we'll Theater. be if and I this? guessed right. <laughs> An autograph Braille. in Braille. 
Now this one. What do you see? What about uh what about Schoon Cape? Best villain? A cheering yes. crowd of lanky albinos. <laughs> Was that the <laughs> question and the answer? <laughs> yes, yes. That blotchy thing that a flashbulb does to your eyes. Well, I, I'm so glad to hear that Andrew voiced the narrator in you season three because I had it's not no idea. I just thanks, Doc. Do you, you know, think I might have artificial personality um, disorder? Maybe, but people with great APD little uh, known for their obsession makes me money. happy. I love yeah, it. I don't know if that was deliberate at all, uh, as much as just his voice, his performance as that character is incredible. Actually, let's save the psychoanalysis for later. Hmm. Postponing responsibilities. Yeah, the opening dialogue of season three with the narrator talking about the power of the mind to comprehend the power of the mind or whatever that <laughs> I can never remember it correctly, but it's like oh, I just, funniest I just thing to saw me. it. It's like um the only thing more powerful than the mind is the power to comprehend the power of the mind or something like that yeah you know, it's so good and the way he reads it where he sounds include, like uh, let's confused by his own thought or by the line that he's being asked to read to but like slightly confused and, and powers through it is like Mary one's mother a strong opener to a video game hey, or to anything hey, Sam. and i love uh there's a there's a scene with brady culture um coming up soon where um uh you know what? i'm not gonna spoil it i'll, I'll bring it up thumbs those who have not played this game. Um, when was the last time that all of y'all have played Sam and Max? <laughs> the, um, I mean, obviously with the remaster, there was a lot of testing, but before that, I guess. I mean, I think it was 2007. Wow. <laughs> How do you like to shrink my head a little, Doc? Part of our yeah, process. Though. What's your three? In 2010, I probably replayed them. Can we do some more ink blocks? Part of our Those process was to sit down and play sure. each of the old episodes and then here. talk about what we could do to bring them up to to part to bring them up to speed. So that was a real fun thing because we all got to sit down and see kind of where it was at now. Um, we went through one at a time and then we did a pass. Eric and Brett would do a pass and then we'd come back and look at it again and, and you'd watch this shift in the episode that was pretty amazing. Now, how about this one? Money. Pick the money one. Yeah, I uh, I had to I had to think about it for two. Like, oh man, I an SUV forgot again. Into an <laughs> mansion. And this? Hard being ADD and walking the game develop, and also listening to a dialogue heavy <laughs> point and click adventure game. My uncle Louis oh. Mothy. But I'm managing. Now this one. What do you see? <laughs> um. So we're, we're, we are going for money. So that's, of course, elephants the elephants at the New York, at the stock, New York exchange. stock Exchange. And this one? Oh, this puzzle. The debit card. A debit card fed through a document shredder. Hmm. Well, judging by your responses, you seem to be fairly obsessed with money. That's a symptom of artificial personality uh, disorder. De Devismo um, asking, are there going to be any new Sam and Max Very games at any point in the future? I can tell you for certainty you for that there's that new uh, VR game that's say, coming out bones. soon. I'm not a sawbone. Yes, um, there's a Sam and Max, this time it's virtual, tomato, coming tomato. from hey, Happy Giant me. Games, which is... Mike Levine's company, who worked on Sam Max Hit the Road, and Mike Stemley is writing it. What's free association? Sam Max Hit the Road it's and a test of your reactions Devil's to Playhouse. In your life. I and it's got the uh, VR you game. Just say or and it's got the, the voice actors coming back head. for Sam Dance Max, summer, right? Recite the yes. alphabet, um, scream at the top of my lungs. I'm very excited. Sort of I don't have VR, but mm, I'm very excited for that game. <laughs> have we started already? No, but now we will. Ready? Is that the word? No, the word is tumble. What comes first, script or puzzles? Yes. Can I sit in the tattoo chair? <laughs> that is the question, isn't it? No, usually it's the um, sort of the, the overall story, like sort of big beats get laid down, and then a bunch of details go in, which is when you make up all the puzzles, and then you do the script last. Uh, that was actually a, a a separate shingle in our overlapping production process for these games oh, where we would spend a month kind of when you designing everything of and then we would take that show. episode to script and we'd be writing the script while we were also designing the next oh. episode we would do both of those things for a month 
then they would, things would actually go into production. Oh, there would be a little bit of direction happening. Office. It would be writing the script well, for the third one, and, or the second one, and designing Violent the third one, and, and so on. The word. Very interesting. A little bit crazy. Well, this has been illuminating. Yes? Your responses lead me to believe that you have an unusually violent reaction to hairstyling. You should see him at the podiatrist's. It could be symptomatic of artificial personality disorder. I love the character, Sybil. I agree. Um, I love that you every time you see her, she's got a different job. <laughs> Am I deranged? I don't want to alarm you, but it was interesting probably. building the characters for, for this um, set of episodic games is a little different from how we had done it before in, in larger, you know, sort of oh, big games where like we had to kind of yeah. introduce them and get people used to them really fast and then develop them deeper later. So we gave them each like a shtick that they would have and it was like, okay, this is going to be this character's shtick. And at first, that's going to be kind of different. the dominant feature that you'll mm, notice yes, about them. And that was hers, was Tell she's just going to have a new job, you know, every 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 week. And you'll, uh, you'll, you'll spend some time finding out about that. And then, remember, you know, we would try to add a little surprise to them a little bit later oh, on. And then eventually, Substance was the last get? of the, the three S's that we got. It was a wedding cake, ripe for the toppling. Oh, it's yeah, Dave. Of getting of character married? development. Mm -hmm. It's... It's good the way that the way that Sybil uh, the way that Sybil and Bosco unravel. Uh, I guess I mean that in by multiple definitions of that. But the way they <laughs> the way they sort of unravel or unspool over the course of the seasons is is oh, really satisfying. Oh, you had a special guest. Uh, Who was it? We did when Sam is hypnotized or whenever when he goes inside of his own brain. We thought that it should look like a sort of Vaseline smeared old movie for some you? reason. So that's well, clearly that's, I represent your that's mother. This now. Wait that's a great. second. I Basically, any time we had you go back to the office over and over and over again across the season, we tried to do something oh, new in it. Well. So this one is black this and white. A um, there's a puzzle of left in the office disorder. in episode three, and we put yes, music I mean, in it. You know, it's I just hope it's not serious. Any, any of the places that you go to over and over and over and over again, we tried to put a little bit of extra surprise in there for it. Wow! I also, I always love the souvenirs that you can check the closet and like. You know, I can get a paper out of this. did Brady Culture's hair and, you know, all that. Stars, then. I've signed this admissions form, yeah, but black you have and white to arrange your own that, transportation. I'm about to be Turned out it was really very easy to do now that we have full-screen color Since you're crazy, can I drive? Jumping vehicular nice. homicide, no. Yeah, it's like in... five minutes. <laughs> it didn't yeah. have a no-R feel in the original, right? We, we just... We just normal lighting originally. Here. Yeah. yeah, it was just regular lighting. Randy was very happy that it was one texture change to make it look like that and not having to change any other parts of the game. Well, yeah, because I worked on the, the Batman noir we going, thing. Jan? Well, that was all, like, very oh, handmade, detail-oriented yeah, black and white, whereas oh, mine was okay. like, what if I take the color out of the camera? And then it... <laughs> <laughs> it's for a joke. All right, here we are. Brady Culture's home for child stars. Oh, the headlights turn on when they drive away at night. Good stuff. Awesome. Oh, that monkey. I, oh, that monkey is terrifying. Looks like a shifty <laughs> character to me. Don't they all? We put him in the Oval Office in Episode 4. <laughs> he makes an appearance in the War Song now. Did you do that just because the widescreen camera was empty and you were bored? Like, why did the monkey get there added in there? On that shelf and, and Eric and I were like, what can we put on that shelf? And I think I took the banang on there and you're like, no, no banang. <laughs> yeah, no, no banang. banang. You, can't, you can't violate the banang timeline. Banang doesn't yeah. show up until 2 or 2. I banang timeline, so we I found that monkey. Yeah. It's perfect. I'm pretty sure that there. monkey was was a black thing that hole. came directly out of one of those meetings hole, with Steve. It's a star that's been crushed under its <laughs> own weight, those destined to really desolate darkness for all eternity. Yeah, that that very much makes sense for Sam and Max. <laughs> Come on, little buddy. There's justice to be served. Can we get ice cream afterwards? Yeah, Coaster justice in the chat says, "I'm glad the Benang timeline remains intact." <laughs> Yeah, who knows what would happen to the universe if, if uh, like, Benang instability uh, occurred. Oh, yeah. 
This reminds me of that place that where Aunt Jody lives here. with the medicine smell yeah. and the rubber sheets. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, it's already it's there and we just never filmed it, if like I'm not mistaken. Life. Is that right, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't add anything to the scene, really. It's all there. Yeah. Eric just put shots in that showed the environment that we built for ourselves in the first place. I think when we were working on this, this scene and the hypnosis scenes felt like they could really benefit from lighting and effects and, and music and just some reshooting because they, they seemed like they were the last things we did before we shipped on uh, the original and, and there was a lot of places we could make read better like this shot. I've been uh, waiting for the, you. The new camera really? angles Next in this game is some of my open. favorite Save us all some changes. Break. Like just little simple, um, like the <clears throat> the White House episode. Uh -oh. There's like this submarine you get to see Good in the waiting the pool. And originally, you click on it, and I Sam just says, "Like most secure waiting pool loved, in the nation." But all. then now it's like full-on angle change where you actually see the submarine in full under the water. It's Those stuff like that. You get to see more of the world. Shirts, <laughs> that was something that we jingles. we built out. There, there used to just be a like an egg shaped audience. thing for the submarine. We built a at Emma. And now you two build a whole new submarine for inside of there. Down on his luck, actor mass hypnotized the entire viewing public to become his worshipful fans forever. How cruel! Talking about Is the it hair. over? I think so. <laughs> Brady's hair is like 5% fluffier in the remaster. I think, John, you went and added, added, added like a normal map and some texturing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we have normal map, so. Was it just like a plastic egg? Just have to take yeah. Places. The first <laughs> drill is like a giant brain, right? No, my friend. We had to tone it back a little bit. We toned it down. Yeah. It was awesome. Hey, that tells me. Thank you, Nick Saint, in the chat for saying Nick Cage vibes on Brady, because that's 100% what I thought it was. But. <laughs> I was like, why is Nicolas Cage evil and why does he have an app? What? <laughs> What's happening? It's funny, I never oh, no. had that connection. What are you doing? That's so funny. I don't know. I... You were in on it all along. I told you it was a conspiracy. I told you, but then you already knew, didn't you? No, I always I forget the, this about this must part. Deliver videos. Deliver videos. Call Interpol. Call Mickey Rooney. Must deliver. I always remember these Mickey puzzles Rooney in videos. season one as like twenty percent shorter than they are, and then whenever I go back and play the game, like these are long. These actually are super I long games. Must deliver uh, for how for how like compactly they're they're you know not a lot of environments, but they layer over I themselves must a lot. Deliver videos. Expectations were a little bit different in two thousand six. I remember as as we were saying to the, to the general public, hey, we're we're working oh, on this. Episodic series of stuff. There was a lot of concern <clears throat> over just how much each one would be, how big is it going to be, what do we have to pay for it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I want to say um, this is very random. Has nothing to do with the graph. I mean, I guess everything. Uh oh. But either I just um, into the Salvador. I love that the West file size of this I'm game dreaming. is so small, and the game you runs so well. Me. Um, Become. Sometimes my computer has trouble with certain games, man. but like I've had Do my no issue running so this forth. game, you know. <laughs> but it still looks so good. Oh, brains in a blender. I'm still hypnotized. I heard on the oh, internet yeah, somewhere that the remaster is actually a smaller Just download size than downloading, downloading all six of the original you know, episodes, and I think it's because we're able to actually hey, Sam, share here. all the resources oh, that all the episodes shared instead of duping them out six times. And no light maps. And there's no light maps. Yep, there. there's the lighting. The lighting is all done real time on your graphics card, and all of the environments that are shared are actually shared. So yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Max's body. Yeah, like we we used to ship six versions of the office walls, good, and now we ship too. probably only a couple. Um, and I think the reason it runs well is because Telltale hey, spent 13 years it's after like this making increasingly ceiling. ambitious oh, games and trying to get the tool to catch up with their ambitions and then we're like well let's just rewind oh, the clock 13 years and use the newest Howdy, version Sam, of the tool that was built for batman and the walking dead and stuff and then have it run sam and max and that version of the telltale tool i think here? was like oh that's yeah, fine i can do this <laughs> i i remember what it's like to draw a room Whoa. that is Whee! made of like 12 walls instead <laughs> of uh, a small outdoor woods full of 30 again, zombies Sam. or whatever hmm, what now yay <laughs> Brady's head Brady. on Max Sam, looks really great notice, in this I'm right scene. Back where I started. Okay, hold on. I'll think of something. Yes, I I love Brady's stolen Max's body. <laughs> How good he actually <laughs> looks Just with Max's body. I think someone needs to turn the lights out on your career, Brady. 
Uh, what? Uh, uh, no! Yes, the lighting oh, in this Brady scene culture. with that he turns no the look. Off with his smile. So good. Yeah, the, the green hypno vortex is, a, is an image that I thought was always super awesome. Like it was in the original trailer that we did for the season. I and then you it. see it swirl in people's eyes. And I think oh, when they're hypnotized and you think Whee! you see it in the background Whoa. of this one scene gotcha. in the original game. Yay! But it was such a nice kind of iconic graphic that we <laughs> use it way, 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 way more in the remaster. Because it's just like, it's such an... Uh, such a simple visual image that sort of ties the whole season together. Mr. Really well. Culture, I have a surprise for you. Really? For that me? That fish swimming by really makes me think of Monty me? Python too. Like this is one of those like no! Sam and Max usually have their own unique form of weirdness, oh but this one kind of gets into like meaning of life Monty Python type of scene or something. Max, <laughs> Sam, a little stringy, but good. It's oh, giant I just remember, I'm supposed to be somewhere. Bye, Max. <laughs> My God. Wonder what would happen to the picture quality if I gave this a tug. No! I must be on TV. I always forget that Sam and Bosco are in the fish tank. No! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes, that's much better reception. They are. Still, they're just like, you're my best friend or whatever they yeah, say. Yeah, it's like, I've, I've always thought of you as a son. <laughs> like, I showed much, but I love you, Sam. Oh, no, that's what now, it is. Go I love you. Go wash my car. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I love so strange. Just this is deep, like <laughs> subconscious I thing. I will be Sam's universally with. loved by everyone in the universe. What is this thing? I'm the wrong. I wanted to hear Brady Culture talk. Sweet rodent eating disorders. That is one fat rat. I oh, yeah, Jesse James's I... hand is alive in this scene, which is. Yeah, Brady like, culture. Yeah, it points at him randomly. Pointing around. Cheese. What is it, fool? I, I didn't notice it until this time, but every now and then that lamp turns around to get a look. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> um. No, the cheese must stand alone. No! And another one bites the cheese. A violent cheese. Ah, uh, very well played. Oh, uh. oh no! They're He's actually away. just making We're out of there. For. Save the girlish histrionics, Bosco. I'm all right. Hmm. I was merely the victim of your garden variety video delivery hypnosis Sam's scheme. Angry okay, face in a second when he's got that snarl. My, my favorite. Holy underpants draped to the mast of a sinking pork rind freighter. That hirsute egomaniac kidnapped my little buddy. And that uh, he's got at the end of that like my little buddy's been kidnapped. Uh, I, <laughs> I live for that stuff. Any idea how I can curtail this culture crisis? Not to spoil Great season culture. three, but there's an episode titled "They Stole He's Max's Brain," Sorry, and Max, no can do. that whole I've episode is one of my all-time favorites. I yeah, there's it, it happens a lot in the comic books, and by a lot I mean oh, uh, uh, there's no maybe spot. one or two panels yeah, or one or two pages those, every now and then where something bad will happen to Max, like Max. Gets kidnapped by a what? weird cultist in the first comic book, or in a Thanks, Bosco. bad day on the moon when they go to the moon. Max gets zapped by a laser grid and then just turns into a sort of oh yeah, pile of ash in a bag with ears, and <laughs> that always makes Sam like really despondent and emotional. He becomes really sad or really angry, and I know, like, I'm Dave. Am I right that Max being kidnapped by Brady here was kind of a reference to that stuff in the comics? Um, well, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's just, well, and it's just fun. To, Sam showing the the uh, occasional break in his usually complete calm demeanor. I'm not going back to that asylum until I've got a word. Is someone against is, that dastardly hypnotic? Right? Start, another question. Someone in the in the um, chat was asking about the voice recording sessions, Dave. I don't think I ever sat in on any, but were you in any? They were wondering if the how the actors handled it. They were they laughing? Did they did they um, make some stuff up? What was what was that like? I, I made Brendan do all of those. Brendan uh, always went. <laughs> oh, they must have been laughing Max if Brendan going. was there. He was probably well, rewriting lines on the spot for them. Doing the Brendan oh, laugh. That megalomaniac Brady Culture's got him. <laughs> I see. Of yeah, but I remember course. Brendan. It was always Brendan was always sitting at his desk when he was you tweaking the game up at the end, manner? getting the final direction. And he would always be laughing to no, himself when he finished the scene. You could improbable. tell it was done because you see him too, and it would be laughing at the at the end result. I'm a psychotherapist. 
That's all I could tell if an episode was good when he was first started rate. reading. He would be reading the, the new episode. I don't suppose you as a brain specialist would know anything. Laughing that crazy laugh. Uh, yeah, I remember that too. He used to be sitting there chuckling. Lab rats. Yep. You do know <laughs> something. Out with it before my synapses fuse into a milky puddle of slag. Well, it's a gross. Well, for the dialogue, dialogue of Sam Max, it's so about it. but one like of my specific, you know. I mean, Sam has a certain way he talks, Max has a certain way he talks, and hypnosis. just did a That's great job of capturing of that in this game. Lucky break sure. I need. It's a huge. There's, I always thought of it as a series of right angles where. But every every line had to kind of take the previous I line okay and pay attention to it, but then go off in a completely I different like direction than that first line was going. And then the next line would have to do that again. Because we always had to take at least at least two or three right turns in any any sequence. So we've got our line control helmet um, blueprints, just like a pasta strainer <laughs> attached to a. You know, coat, coat hanger. There's a scene, uh, I, I hate that we're only showing off episode one because there's so many fun moments in this game, but there's a scene in season two where, uh, Max shoots Sam in the head, um, to pass a audition for, uh, <laughs> uh, Midtown Cowboys. And, um, there's no time for that. I've got to rescue Matt. Of course, Sam stands up and he's like, Thank goodness I had the hypnotic helmet built into my hat, otherwise, I'd, you know, I'd have an extra like hole in my hat that I didn't need. Our reception. Um, <laughs> gonna tell him as soon as possible. It's just such, such a silly, like, little, like, ah, uh, yeah, of course he did that. Like, you know, this, uh, because we made it nighttime, it meant that when you go back to the office, it's night, which. Uh, I, a fool, had forgotten we would have to deal with, but Brett, who did the lighting, obviously, and Randy did it. But I love how it looks. It actually, um, it looks a ton like the, there was one screenshot released of Sam and Max's office in Sam and Max Freelance Police that canceled the game from 2003. And I think that their office at night in Culture Shock looks like the, like, platonic ideal version of that screenshot which is hilarious to me personally i guess because i was as that a won't help me rescue max. sam and max nerdo who did not work in games yet when freelance police was coming out i obsessed over all of the magazine coverage and like online coverage of freelance police and i'm happy that this game finally evokes that screenshot that, that went out and made me want to play that game that was canceled and then made me bug dan until he hired me <laughs> Best thing that ever happened. Family may be in <laughs> citation needed. <laughs> Vosco, take a gander at this. What is it? A death threat? Even better, it's instructions for the latest in Vosco tech innovation. Don't forget if anyone else Let's wants see. to donate any know, money to ADRF. Oh, yeah. To help fight type 1 this. diabetes, one all money that? goes to that Something cause. That thing uh, you can type in exclamation antenna. mark donate um, to give. We've raised $590, which, based off of our previous $100, mm -hmm. means we about $500 a night. Hey, Bosco. You Wonderful okay? job. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Uh, nice. Thanks, Bosco. Do me proud. Oh, and there's another um, soundtrack. Uh, giveaway happening in the chat. So type an exclamation mark win to win a Steam key win. for the awesome soundtrack. Well, you can listen to you and me and Teddy time. Bear on yeah, loop for okay. 20 Let me hours. Just add a little Bosco <laughs> Tech Innovation. One of my favorites. And here it yeah, is. Mine too. It'll be just like making the game. The world has <laughs> <laughs> I, I get to experience oh, a little like bit of that. Moolah gauge is running on empty. N O M A. A. Just stop that Brady culture. He's hey. got it. You're a credit to dementia, Bosco. You'll have to pay for the next one, though. How are we feeling, Cleve? Oh man, we're feeling great. Thank you. It's so funny. This is so. Um, I've done a couple of Walking Dead charity streams, as I mentioned previously, with JDRF. Um, and I just kind of lucked out that um, the first year that we were doing the JDRF game to give, I chose Walking Dead as one of the games that I wanted to play. 
um, because my best friend Blake, who passed away in 2017, um, he was obsessed with the I'm Walking Dead back. series, you know, the TV show. Um, so I knew, like, okay, well, if I'm doing this for him, then I should play this game, because I know he would really like it if he had ever played it. Um, and just kind of lucked out that uh, JDRF was like, hey, like, we can actually get you in contact with some Telltale team members, you know, um, to help raise more money. And it was such a, like, my mind was blown. I was like, oh, that's amazing. So, being here, just shooting the breeze with you guys about Sam and Max, it's such an honor, but it's also, Number like, three. surreal. <laughs> when confronting diabolical oh, fun. Villains with hypnotic devices. Yeah, it's nice that you. It's nice that you're a old school. You've been a Sam and Max gamer for a long time, and yes. are way into it. Oh yeah, I've, and over the Lagomorph culture. I, I was a fan of the Boy, cartoon show actually Yo before the, the games. Um, surprisingly song. enough, but a rerun? Didn't we just see but the then I became obsessed with the Telltale games. Well, uh, if you really uh, watch Walking Dead again. and Back to the Future. I was. Those were the ones I played the most. <laughs> Another triumph for skanky ingenuity and ordinary kitchenware. Give it up, culture. Oh my god, that was Yeah, yeah, the Sorry spirals give this like Joel Schumacher Eat Batman sequel vibes. <laughs> I feel like I'm going up against <laughs> Riddler. <laughs> that rope is from Bone. Yeah, that rope is indeed from Bone. It's called a rope sack. <laughs> yep. Thanks, John. <laughs> if you see any piece of art in the game, assume that it is from Bone, and there's a good chance that you'll be right. Uh, and that John will tell you that it is either not from Bone or that it's called something gross. <laughs> we use the rope sack in like almost every single game. Yeah. It's classic. Did you guys ever evolve the rope sack into like better, you know, because even by like Tales of Monkey Island, it was still the same rope sack. Oh, yeah. That's the same on purpose. Okay, good. My buddy, it's always the always a great, a great uh, moment in the nice hat, early pre-production meetings. Like, rare. okay, so we designed this puzzle, which, and we've got this rope, and John would just like his eyes would roll back in his head. Okay, we're using the rope sack, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, like entry-level Telltale memes are, you, you know what Benang is, but then apparently, like Telltale meme masterclass is is recognizing every rope sack appearance across like 700 episodes. Definitely. <laughs> oh, Zeke mentioned the cow. <laughs> Rope sacks and puddles. I um, I, I just want to say real quick that Max just pointed out, you know, um, oh, apparently I can't get hypnotized, and Brady's like, yeah, there must be something wrong with his brain, and it just uh, makes me happy, you know, with season three being so important to me. Like, yeah, of course he uses the psychic toys. His his brain's all messed up. Um, Become me. Somersaulting Democrats. It's foreshadowing. A crate it's genius sour. writing right there. <laughs> <is a shot laughs> yes, yeah, so if uh, season three was really an inkling in our uh, eye, right? This foolishness. Attack the dog. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you for the uh, ten dollars and the five dollars from anonymous donators. Um. Also, yes, how is Max floating in midair? Is he tied to the organ itself? <laughs> yeah, there's a wood, there's like the yellow the minute, organ detail, and he's clearly tied to that and not just floating. I, I, yeah. <laughs> well, I assumed that when I first played, but the chat is asking me, so I, I didn't know how to respond. <laughs> yeah, apparently you should tell them to become video tapes. So they can T-pose. <laughs> Oh, good. Black wits, attack the dog! <laughs> Become videotapes. That, that was a great impression of videotapes. Yeah. <laughs> Forget what I need to do. Oh no, I remember. Um, like, what do I need to do? Become Brady Culture. <laughs> do my evil bidding! Is it attack me? Well, you have I will have to do that. Oh, I'm spoiling it. <laughs> no, I'll figure it out. I'm glad I've already played this episode because this scene didn't confuse me for too long, but I I spent more time on it than I probably should have. <laughs> worship me. No, me, me, worship me. You're my minions, mine. Oh, you guys should attack, attack me. me. 
No, me! Attack me! Me, me, me! Someone yes. pointed out that Andrew Chafin no, got wait, shot in the room sack twice. Oh, because <laughs> he's a pony button. You play him like a two-dollar glockenspiel. I learned all my best tactics in the first grade. I tried to send you semaphore signals with my this ears. This stuff plays so well with the, the new K lighting and the, and the up. smooth you art. It's really up, nice. Buddy. This whole scene. Well, oh, I guess nice we game. should dehypnotize these poor saps again and be on our way. Let me! You know how I adore gratuitous violence. I love how smooth all these start of the game, end of the game cutscenes look. Well, that's look. that, Max. Another yep. boot to the pasty ass of crime. Thank goodness this whole hypnotic mind it's control thing word. didn't go any further. <laughs> that could have been really annoying. It's uh -oh. great to be on your show, Myra. I'm a huge fan. I just can't seem to stop yeah. watching for some reason. More of a look in the next episode. I remember, we we would get to have A cutscenes and B cutscenes and C cutscenes, and A would get the most attention. We can only have two of those. And one of them had to be at the beginning, and one of them had to be at the end. So that's why the middle of the game never looks quite as good as the very first scene and the very last scene. Until now! now they all look awesome. <laughs> that, that line started to blur over the course of these games because the cinematics people just got better and better at cobbling together stuff without having 100% new animation. I feel like by season three, you can't really tell what's what. Whereas in season one, yeah, it's like, oh, this is where the animators animated the A cutscene, and then this is where a mouth moved and nothing else. We pretty much stopped hand animating lip sync after this season, right? Oh, that's true. This season probably has hand animated lip sync for the A cutscene. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it does in some spots. Wow. Oh. Well, I talk about. Boned in the chat. <laughs> Can't believe how many people love Bone. Bone lovers. Well, my buddy, my buddy Espion in the chat uh, is a huge fan of the Bone series, and I, I loved the Bone um, comics, but I've only played uh, oh, not the great, but um, I guess the original. Out from Boneville? Yeah, out from Boneville. Um, but I beat that in you know. Um, what was it 40 minutes or so 50 minutes um it was super fun but it was just very much like like okay this is <laughs> one of the oldest games um but this was a blast to play save the world episode one thank you guys so much yeah um, thanks for having us on the stream thank you caleb <laughs> Bills by, uh, went by so quick, but I guess that's I guess that's it for the stream. Unless y'all have anything y'all want to add or <laughs> anything special. I uh, just like to say another thank you to everyone that turned up and for and for Dave and Jake and John and Randy for taking time to uh, to help out with JDRF and uh, and to play that stream together. That was a lot of fun. And thanks to everyone that, that was involved. And it was so cool to see so many so many fans that still love Sam and Max. So it's been an exciting day. Yeah. And uh, thanks to everyone who donated on the stream. And thank you to all the people who worked on either the remaster or the original release who were hanging out in chat. That was awesome. Yes. Yeah. Um, and you did a great job. I give it the thumbs up. Dave for coming. Oh, thanks, Dave. Yes. Thank you, Dave. All I've ever wanted is the thumbs up from Dave Grossman. Finally. <laughs> only I saw it though, because we're audio only on the stream. But I assure you, <laughs> viewers at home, Dave gave it a thumbs up. I did. <laughs> uh, be, be sure to go out and buy M and Max. Uh, save the world now on PC and Nintendo Switch. Um, I've played both versions of the game, and they both run really well. They both play really well. Um, I like having the mouse option, but the the right analog stick option works great on the Switch version, so I recommend going to check it out. Oh yeah, and there's my link in the uh, chat. Thank you for that. <laughs> I also have my own channel, Calibrated Gamer, as you can see the name down here below. Um...
Oh. <laughs> that scared me. Thank you for the follow to my channel, Cheddar Rat. <laughs> but anyway. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out. Um, everyone. Uh, uh, everyone that donated. Everyone that came and talked about the game. Really appreciate it. Um, but I guess I'm going to go ahead and end this stream. So you guys uh, have a good night over there in Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Caleb. Yep. Thank you. And um, for everyone else, thanks for watching. Um, yes, I do have a, a channel, Calibrate Gamer, if you want to go check it out. I actually have a Sam and Max. I'm going to plug it real quick. I have a Sam and Max review ep video, a 30-minute one, that I'm hoping will be posted to my YouTube channel tonight, which is also Calibrated Gamer. Uh, no promises, because I was running into a ton of render issues. The only reason I didn't post it like three o'clock this afternoon, like I initially had. Um, but be sure uh, any other money donated via that donate link will still go to fight diabetes, even if you have to donate later. So be sure to check it out. And yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, and I will see you guys later. Um, yeah. Bye, everyone. And unfortunately, this stream is over, but we'll see you very soon. Hey, this was really fun. We hope you liked it too. We really do. Seems like we're just begun. When, when suddenly we're, we're through. through. Unfortunately. Goodbye, goodbye, good friends, goodbye. Goodbye, bro. For now, it's time to go. I really do hate to say it. But hey, I say well, that's okay. That is. Guess we'll see you very soon, I know. Yeah, super soon. Very soon, I know. Ooh, get it. Goodbye, goodbye, good friends, goodbye. Goodbye. And tomorrow's another day. <laughs> Caleb, Robot, and the Brobits crew. And you'll we'll be ready for you to come and stay. To watch a let's play. Another day. Bye, guys.